all right good evening good afternoon good morning and welcome to the stream Ooh, you guys you guys are smart God, there's a lot of big words in there let me um go off to this God, nicely done nicely done <clears throat> how the heck is everyone doing today hey good morning orion specter how you doing quad discount how you doing guys if I missed anyone, sorry. It is a good morning. I got a good night's sleep. Um, and, and I used to have a relative. I think it was, um, it would be my, my, my father's stepbrother. So is there such thing as a step uncle? Anyway, he would always tell me, <clears throat> it's always a good day when you're reading the obituaries, you don't read your name. And I go, well, if you're in there, how would you be reading your own obituary unless you're like a spirit? Anyway, let me go over here and make sure audio is working and whatnot. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, or a ghost. Yes, or a ghost. Okay, audio sounds good. All right, let's switch over to this. And, um, I picked up a new game, two new games. This is all the new games I'm buying until Starfield comes out. So we'll be, um, <clears throat> and they got a patch coming in a week, week and a half for um, Forever Skies. Really looking forward to that game. That is such a fun game so far. Scary, but fun. <clears throat> oh. I tell you what. Is anyone built to work in humidity? Because I am not. I must be the biggest wuss there is. I don't mind sweating. I don't mind hard work. I don't. <clears throat> but working when it's like 86 degrees, but because of the humidity, it feels like it's 110. Oh, I'm hopeful. For, I am much. I'm right with you, Spectre. The, the first announcement, no information, and then a little bit of gameplay. And, you know, um, I would have to say Redfall. Yeah. Fans are your friend. <clears throat> well, what I'm thinking about. So uh, Alex and I were doing a little work in the garage. Just. Just worried about No Man's Sky 2. I did not even know that was in development. Really? Are your complaints at the house? I I really enjoy working on the house. I really do. It's, it's a great experience. <clears throat> um, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I got, I got you, Spectre. Okay. The analogy, I got it. Um, yes. Well, I mean, the the where I'm at and where the house is is maybe 15 minutes away, if that. But um, it's just... From California, a West Coast chap like myself, um, we had very little humidity. Unless you went down to like San Diego, they got a lot of humidity. Um, and over by the coast. So, but man, I tell you what, it reminds me of when I used to live in Key West. Yes, I lived in Key West. <clears throat> that was some bad humidity. And when I was stationed in Norfolk, uh, Nor Nor Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia. That was terrible too. So, oh, <clears throat> oh my gosh. All right, let me lock my mouse here to that. So, um, I posted a picture. It doesn't look like. Oh well, I'm. I'm I think my solution now. Now, fans, yes, fans make sense, but I think what I want to do, as as time goes on is um i need to replace i need to replace the garage the garage has been there the garage door not the garage i'm gonna just replace the garage the garage door has been there it's got a small crack in it the seal is not isn't that good so probably the better plan is to invest in a whole new garage door and instead of having the typical over the head opening mechanism they make them so you can mount them to the side so you free up all that space. So that would give me a better seal where the door is. 
And the only other place where anything can come in is your natural venting that you have, you know, up above. <clears throat> so I was thinking about um, the garage is insulated and it, it makes a big difference too, because when it's, when it's 86 degrees outside the garage doors closed, it's about almost 10 degrees cooler or warmer. So it really does help. Um, I'm thinking um, of doing a mini split in there. So yeah. What would a power door would would that be a power door that opens sideways? No, no, no. It, it's um, <clears throat> you know how on your typical uh, hang on your 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 typical garage door either has a a shaft or a chain that opens and closes the door, right? But the the main mechanism is that tension spring. So instead of having the motor overhead, you move the motor on the on the side. You know how you have a you have a garage door and then you have a a wall. So you would mount it here and the shaft would would go that way. Yeah, there you go, Spectre, yes. Or I just get a force field, that'd be cool. Um, we're gonna load. All right, so anyways, but that's that's way way far down the line. <clears throat> but because of all the humidity and and getting things all situated for um that was weird that's better hey, hey there's ben <clears throat> um what what alex and i discovered i thought you were talking about a huge swell <laughs> not for like a barn nah nah uh what alex and i discovered is there is a window in the garage and uh i have since on this side sealed it up vapor barrier, all that kind of stuff. And what we found out is either because of slight shifting or just how it got framed, the frame, so this is the window and you got your frame. The frame on one side is a half inch uh, above the studs. And on the other side, it's three quarters inch above the studs. So if I would have ran sheetrock straight across, it would have been slanted in. So we created furring strips so it would make it even all the way across. So, yeah. <clears throat> you wonder how his chair disconnects in an emergency situation? I, I I don't know, that's a darn good question. But look at that, I can take Ben. <laughs> all right, how is my food and water? My food and water's good. Um, How's the temperature in here? It's good, all right, sweet. Uh, so anyways, we, we got the furring strips all squared away. Gave the new worksite table saw a good, a good workout. I was wondering if, I was wondering it, to the side mounted garage door, particularly if the shaft is mounted. Well, hang on. Um, I saw a video of a guy who, when he made the change, he had to make some changes to his pre-existing door. The, um, the tension, uh, you, you know how usually a garage door that folds up, it's got sections and then it's got little hinges. They had to add some tension, something or others, and he had to adjust those. So it's something like this, right? So instead of having your garage door opener that comes across here, it's on the side. It's not that big. Oh, well, it's got a release. See, right here. See that? Anyways, it, it's, um. look at this satellite. Oh, it's really, yeah, that because there's the hacks now where people can do a, a clothes hanger and snag it. Yeah. Yep. Wow. It's 
not hooked up yet. We're not gonna mess with it. It's, that's Ben's project. Because the rocket didn't work for us anyways. So he's got his workspace over there. Yeah. Um, oh, jeez. I pressed I for inventory. Games. All right. Um, now this is going to bother me here. Let's be consistent with our, uh, Bro streamer, not. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's new. I don't notice that. I never noticed that before. There's a big box. Huh, must have been the last patch I didn't notice. But anyways, Ben will be here around eight. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna go reacclimate myself. Oh, um, we're. I'm trying to automate the ore process. So anyone that's new to um, my little cluster here. Um, obviously you can tell where I spawned. This is my first greenhouse or my safe house, my tool area to create stuff. Uh, then I expanded to, um, I moved the furnace and the arc furnace from there over to here and created a semi automated arc furnace chamber. So when we smelt stuff in the arc furnaces, we capture the gases. It goes through the collection system, sits, gets cooled, filtered, and then the temperature gets balanced based upon some passive uh, cooling. Um, then I decided to work on a better greenhouse. I need more room. That's where Ben's at. So we have, I think tomatoes are still automated. Hang on, let's go check in on them. We started up one game and the tomatoes had died. No, they're, looks like they're growing. So the process is if the Harveys are working, that they'll uh, grab seeds and um, grab the fruit. It goes to the, sh the, the sorter here. And this sorter is set up to say, are you a tomato? If you're not, you come into the stacker and we stack the seeds, which I think something's broken. I haven't seen any tomatoes or anything since. So let me go, let me go check this out real quick. Not that I'm overly concerned with it because we have plenty of tomato seeds and plenty of cans of tomato soup. Um, wonder if, um, if I turn these off. What I've noticed is sometimes when you reload saves, sometimes some automation or logic um, stops working for whatever reason. All right. So it looks like to me they're ready to be plucked, but the Harveys aren't working. Hang on, let's do a manual thing here, see what happens. All right. Maybe it just needs a little help because it died the first time. I don't know. Hey, good morning, Ben. How you doing? You're fine. Uh, 
right, let's see what happens there. All right, 14 tomatoes. All right, 16 tomatoes, 17 tomatoes. All right. I don't know if the Harveys are working or not. We'll uh, figure that out. So anyways, let me head over. So uh, this is Ben's advanced furnace setup. So when we have to create the exotic stuff, he's got his fuel, his cooling, oxygen, you know, stuff. As for his lights. Um, then over here, is what I'm trying to do is take this concept um, and attach it to these uh, big drilling rigs, which I need to test out very soon. So when, when this dispenses the ore, the stuff that cannot be sorted, so I have it, I have this set up to specifically look for the copper ore, the copper, uh, gold, all the basic ore elements, anything that's not a basic ore element will go into a holding chamber. If everything that can be smelted gets flip-flop, put into an arc furnace, will get smelted, and then the output will go back over here, and that's kind of where I was working on. So. Now, what I discovered is that... Um, I wanted to, instead of using vending machines, because they, they do hold stuff, but not as much as these silos. So each one of these sorters will specifically be set up for like iron, copper, silicone, so on and so on. But what I forgot to put in was a stacker. So I need to get seven stackers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So let's go get seven stackers. And um, I'm not expecting this to work on the first time. There'll be some tweaks. That's really bright light. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, now I forgot. Down here is um, our power center. Over here, this is the um, heat exchanges for the gases above, the what I call waste gases. And then down here, we have the um, gas generator with a ton of automation that Ben put into place that uh, he took my, my basic idea of checking the top side batteries that if they got to a certain percentage that we would transfer this juice up there. And then when this got to a certain level, the generator would kick on. Well, now is what he's doing the top side batteries and the bottom side batteries, if there's a 10% difference, then this kicks on, generates these batteries, and then tr does the transfer. Now, if these batteries get low, uh, the top side batteries will replenish these batteries. So, And then we got fuel for the generator. This right here, uh, I got tired of waiting until nighttime to crush ice. That's all this is here for. And this big, vast room, um, I just built big because, you know, I hate building when I want to do stuff. So we have cooling for the gases that go in and out of the, um, the generator. So it's all animated to where we have a certain pressure maintained in here at a certain temperature. So this can always turn on and we don't have to babysit it. All right, so I'm down here. Let me make some stackers. Stacker. So Ben is working on or was working on the rocket, but we were very unsuccessful to get the rocket to launch successfully and even bring anything back. So we're gonna wait a few patches. So we're gonna work on trade because we can get all the ore we need. 
now. We don't have to go out and mine for it. But uh, we have gases. Something we still have to go make. Specifically like nitrogen, oxygen. Hey, look at that. Hey, hey, look at that notable 67 month resub. Joe, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. Uh. So I got asked a really good question in Discord. Do Alex and I have a target date for the home? Well, we're pretty sure that by the end of this month, we can have the home ready to be moved in. But I don't think we're going to move in until, I don't know, maybe end of August, beginning of September. Uh, but I'm going to be moving my streaming setup, my office, over there by the end of July. All right, so how do I want to do this? I guess we could just come out of there. So let's, um, let's grab a wrench. Drop those. And if we just, oh, wait, 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 no, no. So if we keep that like that, then we want a stacker. Yeah. All right, then we can set this for 500. That'll work. All right, so um, to make this easy, all right, so like that. Hey, boss, how the heck are you doing? Long time no see. Hope you're doing okay. You're good? Oh, nice. I have a quick question. Do you have... Do they have research in this game already? They do, and it, it's it's okay. I'm, I tried it once and it, 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 I would say it was a good first effort. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm, uh, oh, no, absolutely not. No, 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 no. But it, it is there. It's a, I think a good basis for something better. Or if they ever open up real modding to the game. I tried to play this game, got lost so far. Fastwing, if you got questions, there are many, many smart people in chat. Um, I know the tutorials work, but you can't stray from what they tell you to do, otherwise you'll break them. 
Yes, yes, modding. Modding community for most games really takes the games to another level. Oh, I'm gonna, floating away. Um, and, and I, I am a classic example of not knowing game mechanics and through the patience and intelligence of chat, I become educated. It's true. Hey, Maniac, how the heck are you doing? Uh, it's true, I didn't know what physical. I didn't know this game used physics. I, I, the only game I ever played that thought I used physics was Kerbal. Uh oh, right, hang on, put this back. I'm trying to pick up all my stuff. All right. Oh, I'm doing great, Maniac, really am. All right, so. All right, so let's get all this stuff wired in. I need another tool. Yeah. I've got my top five and then there's Gamer Circle, so. Oh, I got something funny to tell you guys. So, 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 um, hang on. So, you know when you have, how do I say this? So when, when, when anything is done in construction, right? You have a, a contractor, right? You, you hire a general contractor to do the work, whether they can do it or they reach out to subcontractors like electricians, plumbers, or whatever. So <laughs> when, when we were doing the modification to the home, um, or the new bathroom, we had to submit permits. We had to have a electrical permit because we're adding electrical to, to this room plumbing so plumber permit and for some reason the county said we needed a construction permit and when the inspector came out said no you don't need a construction permit if you're not adding to the pre-existing house if you're just adding a wall like we were we didn't need it so but that was okay we learned through the process so when you hire out your plumbers they're responsible for their stuff to pass their inspection so they're the they're the general contractor for the plumbers Anything else in the state of North Carolina, the homeowner can be the general contractor. So Alex was saying, hey, Gamer Circle is the general contractor, so I'm GCGC. So check that out. I thought that was, we thought that was hilarious. All right, how are we gonna do this? Ah, okay. I know it's the little things really. Yeah, if you hold down the alt, Alt button, you can grab stuff, see? Left alt. See that? I'm doing that. I need some more cables before I go any further. Um, we're gonna go over here and make some cables. Put this away. The GC of the GC, I know, I know. Alex thought of that. All right, so we're gonna go here and then type in cable, heavy cable, plenty of stuff. Yeah, oh, oh. Hey, there's Mason here. How the heck are you doing, Mason? Oh, and we do have a small array of uh, solar panels. Not much. Oh, you know what I need to do? Hang on a sec, guys. Well, I gotta do something because Ben's gonna be joining here soon. So let me do this real quick. Uh, I need to go over here. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. Oh, 
Come on, Steam. Thank you. Oh, why does that want to be on the outside? Oh, that's so weird. Strange. I can't get this to go. All right, hang on. See if that, see if that works. Yeah, it worked. Okay, I got it. That was weird. Weird, I'm telling you, weird. All right, so I got to do that. Then I need to come over here and hop into something like that. All right, sweet. Uh, oh, and while I'm waiting for cables, so my oxygen is good, but my CO2 is a little low or a little too much. So we're gonna just swap out our tanks. How's our rocket fuel doing? Rocket, rocket. Okay, might as well swap that out and get that all topped off. All right, nice. All right, cool. What challenges are we facing today? Um, Ben's trying out the brand new trade system. I'm attempting to expand upon this little automation issue or idea, and we're going to automate our ore collecting, smelting, wait, mining, smelting, sorting, collection. Yes. We're trying to use the rocket to launch the rocket to bring back gases. Um, we're having problems. I think it's multiplayer issues, so. Yes. There's going to be a lot of that because the way that I do things in this game and most, most other games, Factorio Satisfactory, is I get things working on a very spread out scale and then i try to attempt to try to make it look pretty how do you guys supply this a lot of off streaming mining wait i managed to start up factorio again that was a really bad idea <laughs> hey ren what's up man how do you guys supply this a lot of off stream mining. no 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 the um well, yes, initially, since since I feel bad that I'm out running around looking for ore, I would spend maybe an hour or two collecting ore and then, you know, but now with these things, which are constantly digging up what's called dirty ore and the new combustion centrifuge, look at all the stuff waiting to be processed. They have a big change coming to where your pipes, what's ever in them can be affected by temperature. And uh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that or not. All right. Oh, excuse me, that was rude. Hey, look at that. Hey, Ren, thank you for the 36 months, man. I appreciate it very much. And, and gas in liquid, vice versa. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna break my brain though. Hassle, sure. Is it gonna make me wanna go play a different game? Maybe. <laughs> Monday, I'm gonna try a new game, Alien Dark Descent. And then we'll we'll go back to Kerbal. Oh. Uh, Kerbal one. Yeah, uh, I, we started up a brand new. Uh, I keep destroying my factory and satisfy. Doing the refactory thing, sure. I got a I got a factorial build that I need to get back to too. 
Yeah, in fact, uh, Kerbal 2 is at the state when Kerbal was first released. It was just sandbox, had very minimal parts. In fact, if you're trying to make a shuttle, you, you could make you could make the cargo bay that they didn't open. So, yeah. So, um, we'll see, we'll see, you know, when they start pumping out big patches. I got a big patch coming for uh, Forever Skies that I'm looking forward to. All right, so let's, um, where's the, um, there we go. Find my welder. We're going to do a battery swap here. There we go. And that's got a rechargeable battery. That does. Does this have a rechargeable battery? It does not. It's got a little dinko battery. Probably should get a rechargeable battery for this thing. Hang on. Oops. All right, that's good enough. I got to work from home here in 10 minutes, so I'll be less talkative. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Can I post a link to a picture of my current factorial base? Boss, I, absolutely. See, uh, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Wait, let me see if this works, though. It may not. I, uh, I made some changes. There you go. Looks like you can. See if it works. Hang on, wait. Well, I did not get it timed out. Oh, you got timed out? Oh, okay, so hang on a sec, boss. Um, I really need to rehome a cute little dog. It's a terror type. It's quite talkative. Like, a roo roo roo, -roo a lot. If interested, let me know. All right, all right. No, I did not, so it worked. Wait, what? I, I didn't see your link. I don't see a link. Hang on, boss, let me do it again. Because I took one of my bots offline, which I think controls this. Yeah, I only saw asterisks too. Yeah, all right. So I do apologize for that, boss. You might have to just post a link out in the Discord. Um, I was running two bots, and um, I can't spell. No, it's okay. Yeah, it, no, no, seriously, go, go out there and post it. That doesn't work. <sighs> Hashtag pro streamer, not, hang on. My bot offline? No, my bot's online. This, all right, let's try this. That one work? <gasps> oh, I know, I, I think I know what's wrong. Hang on. Whoa, there it goes. He finally caught up. All right, never mind. Jeez. No, no, I was using the, um, it used to be called Unkbot and then Star or Streamlabs bottom. And then Streamlabs did something really stupid, absolute plagiarism on one account. And then they tried to copyright their version of OBS. So they, whoever was in charge of Streamlabs, which I think is Logitech. I, I just didn't want to be associated with. So I took the last remaining logic that that bot did was the link protection. So I, I just got tired of waiting for that bot to do stuff. So I, I took it offline. Um, I want to make a, uh, a wireless battery for all my tools. Because what I need to do is as soon as the, the home is done and we get moved, I'm going to refocus my attention because I'm two versions behind on OBS and then reach out to... Um, the bot community on my on my bot to see what I can do. Um, all right, so hang on, let's let's uh, see how our tools are. That's a wireless tool, wireless battery is what I meant to say. That's a wireless battery. That's a wireless battery. All right, so I need to get a wireless battery for oh my probably my tablets too. All right, thanks, Fosk. I'll take a look at it. There's actually a Factorio channel, too. And you get that by going to the roles. 
Not like dinner rolls or cinnamon rolls. Never mind. Oh, there goes the sun. Near, 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 near. All right. What I'm waiting to waiting for is this to finish. One last stack that I can put in the locker. Oh, pizza rolls. Yum. So we've got a really cool feature at the house in our new kitchen. It's the old kitchen just remodeled. So we've got one of those glass rinsers that you, you know, if you have a, I don't know, a, a, maybe you had a milkshake and you want to rinse it off, you, you press it down and it shoots water. And I was very excited because I finally got my, my old ninja out and I went over there and I was making myself a, a fruit smoothie. My ninja cup is too big. Just gonna have to transfer it to a smaller cup. Oh well. No, he'll be here soon. He'll be here soon. He's gotta get, you know, the caffeine juices flowing. All right, that's enough. Give me all these wires. Put them over here. Go. And I was going to, um, <laughs> I need, um, battery. Ooh, I didn't know there was, well, maybe I did know. Oh, I got a big one there. All right. Um, it takes steel, copper, and gold. All right. We're going to, um, I don't need to put the wireless batteries here. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think all my tools have got small wireless batteries. I'm going to switch over to big ones. All right, so let's start with this one. And um, let's put this there. Uh oh, that there. We go. Put this one over here. Just trying to get organized a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, then we'll take this wireless battery. So now that tool's got a wireless battery. Ah, look at there. Actually. So yeah, we're swapping over some batteries here. Because if you're in the base, why not use wireless batteries, right? You don't have to keep worrying about a battery running out. All right, takes care of that one. Oh, no, I'm just gonna put the small ones. I'm just lay them over here somewhere or put them in the locker. Or recycle them. All right, so tablets are taken care of. I do carry a spare battery around. Um, that, that's got a small one. So let's put that there. Hmm. So a, a little bit of uh, administrative uh, stuff here. That game scares me. I accidentally attacked the wrong faction.
And all my allies got scared and left me. Uh, so today at the house, all I'm going to do is, um, um, something I've learned from, from, uh, doing home renovations is that when you strip something down to the wood and it looks like for the most part, anything frame wise, casing wise, uh, the doors are real doors. So I mean by it's a solid wooden door, but it's made out of heart pine. So I'll let you guys look that up. It's got a very distinct pattern. So when you paint, you have to, oh geez. I didn't realize I had that many popped out of here. Um, hang on, let me focus here. Um, because of the pattern, you got to do more than two layers. I got one more battery here. Is there anything that needs a battery that I didn't think needed a battery? I don't want to use this because that, that, that's on a nuclear. My suit, my suit's already got one. Huh. All right. Well, I guess what we'll do is we'll just uh, put this in the locker too. All my tablets. So this has been, so let's go through everything here. So the suit has got a wireless and then I carry around a normal one just in case. So these, my, my renamer, that's got a big wireless. Ta this tablet has a big wireless. My advanced tablet also has a big wireless. I think you can just right click and oh, oh you're right, you can. Hey, done. How you doing? Um, you're right, I can. I, I just it's old school, right? So then if we go to the tools, oh, yeah, okay, that's got a big battery. That's got a wireless battery. That's got a wireless battery. That one does too. All right, we're covered. We got all the batteries I need. All right. I came down here for wire. I got new batteries. Let's get to work. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll let Ben sort out his electrical needs. All right, so we're going to go over here. And we're going to... Um, First of all, what I'm doing is I'm doing all the, oh geez, doing all the angles. All right, then let's go. Um, these then let's connect these I fully embraced the wonky controls of station years years ago no need for a mouse oh come on oh you know what um, okay let's do let's just keep this simple like that Yeah, the, the first time you had to play the game, it was very, there was no mouse <laughs> at all.
Uh, for the dumb me, what are you hooking up right now? Well, all right, let me let me uh, go back to. So this is this is kind of a a spin. Oh geez. So over here where we do most or did most of the ore processing, so you'd go out, you'd mine the ore, you take the ore, and then you would dump it into this uh, auto loader, right? And then it would put all the ore in queue. It would refine it. The output would then spit out here. So I want to take this arc furnace part of it. The I want to take the mining, the smelting, the sorting, and the stacking and storing. I want to automate it. So we don't have to go out and get ore anymore. That's what these big guys are for. These guys are collecting dirty ore. The dirty ore goes through this little queue system here. And then the new centrifuge, the new combustion centrifuge here, uh, cleans it up and it gives us what we need. So we have cobalt, silicone, all the ore, right? This one right here, this sorter is, is this right here. This is specifically looking for the copper, the iron, yeah, the power wash, all the stuff that we can smelt. If it can't be smelted, it gets deposited over here. So that would be the coal, uranium, the cobalt. Hey, look at me, I'm hopping mad. Then it goes over here and it hits a series of flip floppers on the chutes. It will hit these arc furnaces. So I'm doubling how much I can smelt. And we're gonna do the same thing. I, I don't think I need this big of a room, but yeah, it's just laying around. They, they haven't incorporated it. I've heard a little bit of chatter about it, but not much. So once it gets smelted, it goes through here or out there. Oh, itchy eyeball, I got itchy eyeball, itchy eyeball. Everything's blurry. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, that's better, all right. So once it gets smelted and it gets kicked out, then I need to start sorting the individual ingots. So then we'll have this one. This one I believe is set for iron. So this one will say, hey, are you iron? If you are, then we stack it to, we can stack it up to a 500 chunk, whatever, ingot, right? So it'll get stacked here. When that fills up, then it gets stored in its own silo. And that's what all these will do. These will all do the individual ingots or uh, yeah, ingots, stack them, store them. Then I don't know what I'm gonna do after this point. Because unfortunately with the silo, when you release it, it dumps everything. But I think because you can do some logic, you might be able to hook up a switch and just spit out one. So anyways, right now I'm just trying to uh, get everything all dialed in here. And I, I don't even know if this is gonna work. I'm optimistic that it, it, because it's very basic. So it should work. Oops, didn't work. Oh, I forgot to connect this. And I'm, I'm using heavy cable all the way through here because, and I might swap this out later. If you take a look at um, station cheat, if you take a look at that, that, that file there, No, I think I think on the on the silo when you throw this lever, it opens up everything. It just doesn't do one. It does it. Yeah, it, it floods the gates. That's weird. Um, so on this on this document, when you're looking at, jeez, that's slow. Come on. What is taking so long? Seriously? All right. Uh, is it under atmospheric? So yeah, no. Oh, electrical. All right. So under electrical, you can see how much power an arc furnace draws based upon what you're smelting. So if I have four arc furnaces running and they happen to get gold, they're gonna draw 2000 Watts each and if there's anything else on that same circuit that goes over another thousand watts, we're gonna pop a wire. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'll look into that. So that's why we're doing heavy cable. And then after a while, then maybe is what I'll do is I'll put a, uh, I'll put a, uh, a transformer in there. But we're doing this for right now. Yeah, you're right. I can do a, a I can do a, a, a button and tell the button to do. Yeah, you're right. I could. Oh, I didn't finish that one out. All right. So now these all should have power. Yay. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll grab the labeler here real quick. Let's put that there. And change that to 500. I don't want to rename the power. Sp oh, stop. I'm, I'm laughing at my own uncoordinated efforts here. Plus, I'm standing on the equipment. I thought the less, yeah, 5,000 watts, you're right. You're right. So, but again, four arc furnaces drawing 2,000, that's for, that only gives me 1,000 leadway. So, if this is all on small cables, chances are I'm going to go over that. So, that's why I'm just using heavy cables for right now so I can test it and then I can isolate stuff with transformers and, and get it to work right. You know? Yeah. All right, so we're almost done. So the sorters, let's turn the sorters on. Oh, I need to also get the, um... thanks Ben. Um, these need to be powered. Oh, great. All right, I need to go get more cable. First of all, while I got the labeler on, Um, okay, it's gonna sound stupid. I need a list of all the ore, otherwise, I'm gonna forget one. I'm bringing out Notepad. Maybe there it is. So we have iron, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in the order I have it sorted. Not that that's any significance, but that way I won't, won't miss anything. Uh, okay, let's put this away that back close those and if we go to the top of the list maybe there we go so we do copper gold iron lead we have Nickel, silicon, and silver. So that should be seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Silver, silicone, nickel, lead, iron, gold, and then the top one should be copper. Now, this, oh, is not on the same network. Aww. I gotta bring another computer over here to program these guys. That's great. Uh, links are disabled, by the way. Uh, that way you could, wait, wait. Hang on. Uh, is there a report? Is there a report 
of what you find most often. The way you could sort out the most common thing. Which one did I forget? What ore am I missing? Hopper. Hopper, gold, iron, silver, nickel, lead. I can't smelt cobalt in an arc furnace. So anything that can't be smelted in an arc furnace, I'm not worried about. Because there's also uranium. So if, if it's coal, uh, I got silicone. So there should be seven ores that can be smelted. Can you smelt cobalt? What do you get when you smelt cobalt? Nothing. Yeah, not in an arc furnace, right. So again, just for arc furnaces, we're gonna automate arc furnace smelting. So this sorter only draws, only looks for these seven taken from the wiki. There's currently no recipe to make ingot cobalt to be combined with the advanced furnace to create the advanced furnace alloys. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, th that is no doubt. Cobalt is used for something. But the first line of defense, so let me back up. Hang on, stop your typing, stop your typing. This sorter is only looking for the seven ores that can be smelted in an arc furnace. Anything, anything and everything else gets spit out over here. So that's why we have seven sorters, seven stackers, seven silos. Seven brothers. So this one is for seven, one plus one plus two plus one. Yes. Um, all right. So I'm going to actually put iron. I'm, I'm for some reason, I'm putting iron at the top of my list. All right. I already have that. All right. So here we go. Uh, this, this, so that says sorter iron. And then I'm just going to use this as a template. So I get the spacing and everything. Oh, that didn't work out very well. This is going to be copper. Um, gold. Lead. Nickel. Silicone. Silver. All right. Yay. <clears throat> I'm going to have to set a computer up over here. So I can tell each one of these what to grab. I'm not gonna worry about labeling those yet. All right, so that's done. Let's go get a computer. I, I could tear this computer down, just use it, but I think I might need it again over here. 343. Whoa. We're gonna turn this off because that's already programmed. Um, and then when it gets to be too much, I can actually tear this wall down, which I think I'm gonna do right now. We need a crowbar. There we go. And then 
I'm just gonna temporarily leave those shoots there just in case I have to reconnect them. All right. Without a calculator. Smart. All right. Okay. Mr. Andy GC Circle, tear down the wall. You know, that was when I had my head wound, that would have been a good Gorbachev line. Wait, what am I looking for? A computer. Compute. Computer. Composter. Ooh. And then I need a sorting. Motherboard. Yeah, he did. That was that whole line from uh, Nixon. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down your wall. And I don't follow politics, so. Did I say Nixon? I meant to say Reagan. You're right. Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down your wall. Yeah. All right. Um, we're just going to put it right here. Oh, oh I got to build it. Oh, I got to build it. What do I need? This. Oh, I, I broke it. It's the other screwdriver, right? There we go. Then we're going to put the motherboard in there. There we go. Then. All right. There's Ben. Good morning. Good morning, Ben. How the heck are you doing? So far, so good. How about you? I'm doing good. Can anyone hear Ben okay? Because he's coming in five by five for me. I think chat, I think their, their, their caffeine ran out. Loud and clear. All right. Let me go ahead and do a save here. So I need to do a save as. We're on part 27. Yeah, we're on part 27 now. Look at that. Affirmative acquisition of signal. That is saving. Still saving. Oh, I thought for a split second there something was wrong with my Windows PC. <laughs> Still saving. All right. Whenever you're ready, Ben. The loading sounds like a minute here. All right. Well, then what I can do is um, put some stuff away. And the uh, the gold needs to have. Oh God, this is good. This is going to be rough. Wish I would fix this. All right, go down, stop and come over and I find gold. Corn, some gold. All right, ready to jump in? Uh, no, wait, wait. Yeah, take your time. Oh, that was hard. Okay, and gold. Hop in. You know, you got a good game when saving takes longer than a second. You know, Jamorian had an auto save in his, his Factorio that was like almost up to two minutes long. That's just a lot of, 
<laughs> Excuse me, stuff. All right, let's go see Ben. Ben's here. Lounging. A few odd errors here, but I think we'll be okay. Okay. He's up. Oh, slammed into the wall though. I'm okay. Fine. A little navigation error. Hey. Okay. Don't forget your helmet. There he is. He's got it. He's good. Okay, let's go to programming some sorters. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. So let's add. It's a good game when you say, oh, sorry. For some reason that just repopulated twice for me. That was weird. So we're looking for iron. Okay, and then we're looking for, so I think I figured out a little way to make this go a little faster. That when you scroll down, you look for roughly where the ore is gonna come in, maybe. Uh, canned french fries, wait, that's a thing? I didn't know that. Oh, wait, wait, delete that one. Add this again. Oh, okay, I guess this isn't as smooth as I want it to be. All right, well, I thought I could maybe scroll closer to where I wanted to be. I was wrong. I don't even know where I'm, I, I think I'm at the bottom of the list now. Yeah, I am. I think. This is seeds. Muffin. Yeah, okay, I went too far. So we're looking for, <gasps> what is this one? What am I on? Oh no, is it silicone or silver? It was copper, I was so wrong. You mean these sorters? I hope not, because otherwise that forces everyone to sort with uh, IC code. I just wish they would fix the interface, that's all. Oh, all right. Yeah, this has been around for, you know, quite a long time. <gasps> wrong. This is painful. Yes, I know. You know, when the when the um, fabricator was around, you could actually type in the search. And they did away with the fabricator. I don't know why. It had conveyor belts and all sorts of cool stuff. I think I, I think I didn't go far enough. I didn't go far enough. <laughs> Again, we're looking for, hey, there's a turret, kit turret. I didn't think that was still in the game. Oh, that's the new pipe cowls. Oh yeah. Um, copper. We're getting close. I can feel it. Almost there. All right, sweet. So we have at the top of the list, we have the iron, sorting iron. It's not iron, then it goes and checks the next one and so on. 
We got gold in there already. All right, so now we do lead. Obviously, because it says lead. You know, I just thought about something. If um, something passes through that doesn't get caught, it will just spit out over here. Yeah. Everything working okay for you, Ben? So far, so good. I got this uh, odd error message in the game, but I still think we're going to be okay. Okay. Um, all right, let's continue on this. You could do it all. Yeah, I, I've done that before. Yeah. Yeah, I did um I did the IC chip and yeah. We did that on uh Ben and I created a an a, 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 and wow words. Ben and I created an above ground base. And then I came up with the scenario that what if someone a bad player, <laughs> a bad AI saw our complex from above and started like shooting at it. I said, "Hey, let's move the whole thing underground." So we we, we built the same complex underground and the sorting room was very small. So yeah, I did use hashtags to, uh, and that that was my first foray, my first attempt to do IC. It was messy, ugly, it worked, and I completely forgot how to do it. But I'm, I'm almost done, so, but yes, you're right. But see, they just changed something with the uh, the MIPS too. So you'd have to go change some code. And since I don't know what really to change, I think I'd still be better off this route. All right, so we're looking for... <sighs> Forgot. Still going. Hmm. I got distracted by the conversation. Too many energy drinks. Nah. What am I looking for again? It's a copper. No, dang it. I forgot again. Oh yeah, it's very possible I have too many energy. You can get the shakes. Does anyone remember what I was supposed to be putting in here? It's not silver, it's right below me. Nickel? No, it should have been silicone. Thanks. Hey, Hindu, how you doing? Oh, that was up too far. 
It's not that I have a short-term memory. I, um, I'm keeping track of, well, only one conversation now. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do at the house at noon when I go over there. Not going to be a whole lot. I'm just going to paint. I'm going to get the door painted. And then I'm going to try to hang the shower rails. The, uh, the directions weren't written very, well, I guess they're okay, but their directions show a drill and it says one quarter inch, one slash four, in parentheses, it has a metric number. What happens if you type SI? Uh, I'll try it on silver. And uh, unfortunately, those measurements for the drill bit are too big. So the hardware that came with it is too small. So I had to wait for a, um, a bigger Ace hardware is too expensive. I, I, I only go to Ace in a pinch. Right, almost there. Silicone. Um, so anyways, we have the correct hardware now though. Uh, silicone. Silicone. All right, so let's um, scroll down on the silver. Type this and SI. Oh, geez. Nope. Oh, and type in the field there. And this just renames this sorter. So, nope. And this doesn't work. I'm fine, though. He did. He tried to alt F for me. Oh no, no, it was, it was right there. No, I went the wrong way. That's all right. Well learned. Hmm. This is the last one. I know it's been painful. All right, they're all programmed. Yay. So let's do some basic. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't want to go in there. Okay, so we have some silver. So if I go in here and um, uh, this will actually be a pretty good test. Let's uh, grab this. I don't know. Uh, that one stays. So these are going to smelt silver. I I think it's going to eject it. Don't you need the ingot if you plan to smelt them? No, that's what I want to sort. You know, I want to sort the output of this versus sorting the input, smelting it, and then storing it. So is what I'm testing is I'm doing some silver and the output should go, it should hit the various sorters and once it gets to the silver one, it should send it over to the stacker. Um, and that's what we'll, we'll check here. You selected ore for sorting. Right, right. Oh, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, um, turn off. You're right, you're right. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So those should actually spit out all the way at the end then. Hey, look at that. At least, at least the sorting works. <laughs> yes. 
You're right. I did or I'm used to doing ores instead of ingots. You're right. No, so the only sorting that I'm doing. Yes, I have to do it over again. The only sorting is are you one of the seven basic ores? You are, you're gonna go get smelted. That's it. It just is checking for the ores, which come out of here. Then as Hindu pointed out, we then refine the ore and it becomes an ingot. So if I'm over here with these trying to stack the ingots, it's gonna fail because I'm checking for ore in all these uh, sorters. Yep, I gotta do it all over again. Uh, so we delete this. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. Every time you make a change, that sorter throws an error message on my side. But oh, okay. okay. All right. No, no, go back to where that was. Funny thing is, is I, I'm kind of familiar in the list where the ores are, but not where the ingots are. Let's let Andy concentrate so it doesn't take an hour. Well, if I concentrate, it's going to take a lot longer than an hour. Yeah, he's just asking for trouble there. Yeah. <laughs> Better if I just have like a, a pizza and I tell stories, my woes. Uh, the ingots came before the ore. There it is. So we're looking for iron. Iron ingot. Yay. Now the ingots come before the ore. Peace, Lily. That's new. <laughs> All right, so let's um, let's go through and delete all of the entries, so I don't accidentally leave something in. All right. Hey, what's up, landlord? All right, so now we're gonna do a copper ingot. There's an error message for. Then Yep. I swear that that yeah, looks like another one. All right. So each time I make a, a click on the drop down box is what it is. All right. So now we're doing gold. By the way, can the whitelist not be changed to a blacklist? Um, no, there's no blacklist. So, yeah. Can't, can't, I, I've well, only... Go ahead. No, no, you got it. It just goes out the other shoot instead. So yeah. Put the shoots. Yeah. Hydration critical. Hang on, let me go take care of stuff. But yes, as, um, as someone pointed out that if I would have done some IC coding, I could have done all the sorters, all the stackers, and instead of using a computer to do all this manual stuff, um, I could have 
the since what doesn't change unless they do the change is each item in the game has got a a hash id code and i could look for specific hashes and do things based upon that but i'm not i'm going i'm going old school all right Uh, it's just it's a standard uh airlock um landlord so the um yeah if, if you know how to code if this was in uh if this was in cobol i think i'd be doing a lot good really good so this this room was the first survival room where i could go to and drink and eat and stuff like this this uses you don't need this. I just like an airlock to have its own power in the event the whole base loses power. So this power controller actually controls only the airlock. So that way, if the entire base loses power, I can still get in here because this will have power because of this. So what we have is a sensor. The doors are wired. So both, both of them. And all this goes up to the console underneath the console is that standard airlock chip motherboard thing that you get in the when you start the game and the the act event i'm not doing this correctly all i'm doing is sending the output into a pipe and the pipe when it's like that it's capped it doesn't go anywhere it's just basically i'm just storing a certain amount of pressure and gases in this airlock in that pipe so when i cycle and this is set for, I believe, 101 kilopascals. It's since I only got 64 in there, that's all that's ever stored in the battery. So I do have to cancel it. And then I can walk in here and we're safe and sound. So as you can see, well, you can't see because my big fat head's in the way. Ooh, hang on. So as you can see right here, here's my external pressure at 64 kilopascals. It's 40 degrees. Uh, and I'm, I'm facing a certain direction. I have automation over here to keep it. If it gets too cold, it'll warm. If it gets too warm, it'll cool. But this is uh, not custom at all. This is just pretty standard. So then when I go to from interior to exterior, this is set. This is set to if you go interior, it's looking for 101 kilopascals. And since I don't have it, I have to press the cancel button. But when I go the other way, That, that'll work. The advanced airlock is good for, let's say you have certain parts of your base is where, a certain part of your base is where it's, uh, and you could actually use the advanced for the MUN. You, you just, you have to program it. You have to have a separate uh, act event, but usually that's good for Mars, for, for environments that need to be customized. So like on the Mars, I believe the external pressure is is it five kilopascals or two kilopascals, something like that? So you couldn't use this one because you would always be bringing an environment into that environment. You'd have to have one, one act event, suck out the airlock, close the door, and then, then it would cycle for the other atmosphere. So yeah, just a, I mean, you could use the advanced airlock for, I could use the advanced airlock for that one. And if I didn't want to ever go above 64 kilopascals, I would program the internal side for 64 and the external for zero, but I would have to add another act event because that's a requirement of that board and then it would work. So the other, the other greenhouse over here uh, is just one kilopascal shy of 101. So it's got 100 kilopascals. So if we take a look at here, yeah, you can see that it's 30 degrees and we've got 100.1. Um, if I go over here, this thing is set for 101. So if I turn this on, that sends atmosphere into there at 101 kilopascals. So this should 
Oh, you know what? That's not going to go above. I know why. I know why. Um, we have back pressure regulators in here set to 99. So we don't over, we don't over pressurize. So this one, same thing. Now this will go up to a hundred and then stop because it's looking for 101. So it's still going to go and still, and it, it'll never work. So in here, I'm doing the same thing. Just storing it in the pipe. If you put a passive vent here, it will push the atmosphere back and forth. So if you have stuff laying on the ground, it'll start flopping around and stuff like that. The best way to do an airlock is to um, connect the active vent to an external storage. That way it'll be faster too. You can get the, you go, um, like you do a small tank, not small portable, but you do a small tank put the atmosphere in there that you want and then you would just cycle back and forth from that tank versus the room. This this works fine too. But see these back pressure regulators are set. No, they, okay, so these are set for 100. So I don't want to accidentally over pressurize this room. If I set these to 101, then that door would open and close all by itself. But I'm, I'm always fearful of blowing something up because it happens. Let's go see what Ben's working on since we're over here. Got a big satellite. And yeah, I just wired power to it. Oh, all right. Hey, good morning, Chris. How you doing? And some flame shooting dragon creatures. And this could be satisfactory with Factorio 3D. It could be, uh, but can a dragon fly on the moon? Wait, you added power. Oh, you got power. What the heck is this? I don't see where you did that. That's very well hidden. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Oh, I see. I found it. It's underneath the, the walkway so you don't trip. Oh, I'm, I'm not stuck. All right. So Ben's working on the, we, we kind of 86 the rocket. We couldn't get it to work to, as it should, as we thought it should be. So we're working on a way of getting gas is without having to go find ice and melt it. And then I'm working on the ore side. And I ran into a, a little bit of a hiccup that was pointed out that I was sorting incorrectly. So we're trying to fix that, which is very slow and very boring. So we got the copper, so now we're working on gold. Oh, we got gold, okay, then we do lead. I see you're working on the sorter again. Yes, I am, sir. <laughs> He's getting errors on his screen whenever I mess with this spazzy interface. We're looking for ingots. Slow and boring. You describe me 98% of the time. Hey, hey, there's a club. We could go found the slow and boring club. Um, I need to go, yeah, so the kits, and then we go to ingots soon for lead lead ingot yes all right now we want nickel Yes, yes. I I can do all this in MIPS. I could, but I, I did I, I did this way. I'm keeping it very basic. But yes, you can sort by hashtag. If you think about it, it, it's what, 15, 20 minutes? So. Nickel. I just forgot what I was looking for. All right. Only two left.
I would rather do it myself. That's the only way I learn in these games. I mean, to be honest with you, I think I've been playing this game ever since it came out. And I think it was probably well into the second year, the third year until I started actually understanding how the logic chips worked. And it was right when I started learning that when they introduced, hey, we, we have MIPS. I went, what's MIPS? And everyone's going, oh, fantastic. I'm going, I'm gonna go in my, my car over here that I have to hand crank to get it to start and I'll catch up with you guys. Does he want us to feel sorry for him? No, 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 no. You know how some people can read like a book. Let's say it's got 24 chapters. Some people can read so fast through those chapters that and it, it absorbs and then people could be on chapter five and I'm still on chapter one, but I'm also on chapter six of home renovations. So how many hours do you have in this game? Let, let me get this all done and I'll answer all of those questions, I promise. Otherwise I'll get distracted. I do remember once I, I complained about something in this game and I put a screenshot of how many hours I was, I'm saying I wasn't pissed, but I was upset about a change that they made that was impacting. It was the first time they changed the furnace. And I said, I said something to the effect where I said, look, I've been playing this game and I put a screenshot, it showed my hours. I go, why would you want to make a change that's gonna impact the amount of time I wanna spend in your game. Now, I don't know if they made that change because of me, but I think there was a lot of complaints about the furnace change that they did. And they they didn't regress it, but they changed it to where it was a lot more, um, um, it wasn't as archaic, I guess. I'm looking for silicone. There's silicone. And then last one, silver. And we'll test this again. Yeah, I, using the furnace, when you're not familiar with the game mechanic, I had this process written down to a T on how to do the furnace. Not, not just for doing iron and stuff like that, but for making steel. That was a huge accomplishment back then. Digital. Hey, hey look right. at that. Look at that. That's 47 months. And right there, digital right there is my MIPS mentor he's the one that taught me how to write my first script i still have it do i remember how to do it no hang on i went too far silver upon his chest the environment america's best um i think i went not far enough. Yeah, you can do anything with your gases. You just have to know if you're mixing gases and you try to do something with it, you have to uh, filter the gases if you want only a specific gas. But yes, you can uh, look at the cheat sheet, landlord, because you have to be careful about the leaders. Not just the pressure. Well, in addition to the pressure. Meanwhile, I'm learning how to use the new MIPS batch commands. Oh. I know what those words mean. I seem to... Uh, I'm on my last one, and I don't have... Oh, okay, here we are. I know where I'm at. I'm trying to pressurize the room automatically in creative. Oh, in creative. Um, Again, it, it matters, right? So if... Ben, do you remember what one frame, if you're standing airlock that frame, how many liters it took to pressurize? You couldn't do that in a portable tank, right? It couldn't store enough. Uh, yeah, actually the small tank is just a bit smaller than a full frame. I think it's like 8,000 liters for a tank and 10,000 for a frame. Right, yeah, so that's why we use the, the small tank, which you see what I, I filter my gases in. I'm lost. 
So if you were to use a small portable They're higher pressure, very, yeah, the, the tanks are higher pressure. But again, if if you're only worried about pressure, you also have to worry about leaders when it comes to going from one storage. So your airlock is basically a storage tank, right? Yeah, there you go. Volume. By the way, discount is a is a fellow streamer. He does, he does all the hard games. He's got more patience. All I have to do is find silver. Well, they hold, yeah, but how many liters is that though? That's what we're talking about. Thanks, Digital. Because it's pressure and volume, liters. which is 1,000 kilopascals. Is it really? Okay, I didn't know that. All right, so we're looking for silver. Boom. All right, so that's all done, finally. So the uh, uh, on the cheat sheet, let's see, this is how Ben educated me. If you go to atmospherics and you look at, hang on. I forgot, it's somewhere it was, it was, it was called out here where a frame pressurized it showed you how many liters it was so right over here if you use a portable tank it holds 790 liters up to 10 megapascals but if you went over the volume the tank would explode so it doesn't matter if you have under the pressure but it, it's talking about volume also because pressure is based upon temperature too right um But in here somewhere we found where it talked about a frame and the liters. And that's why we decided instead of using a, a portable tank. So see, even, even the insulated one that can hold more pressure still only has liters. So, oh, here it is right here. A grid volume is 8,000 liters. Oh yeah, that's it. It's the weird one. There is no 10,000 anything anywhere. Right. So 10,000 so liters. 6,000 for a small tank. Uh, for a small tank or a regular tank. Yeah. 6,000 liters. So this is the closest thing you could store without worrying about, it. even though this can hold more, if you're only going for, you know, 101 kilopascals, this, this would be your safest bet versus the portable tank. All right, so sorting is squared away. Let's try this one more time. If you go for small amounts of pressure, sure. Yeah, it works. Oh, wait, I still got stuff over here. All right, so on, on, smelt, and smelt. So let's go and turn these off. Should see some silver. One, two, all right. So now if the sorting work, yes, I am. That's why, that's why it's in a, a room. Uh, I haven't gotten that far. It, it's very much like the small arc furnace room over here. Whoa. So this one is automated to where it looks at the sensor and if it detects any pressure, it turns on those active vents and it also locks the door so you don't walk in. So it looks for anything in the input hopper, turns on the arc furnaces, they start creating the gases. When it goes above five kilopascals or it gets up to five kilopascals, it turns on the active vents. 
when it gets down to one kilopascals and it turns off. So I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do this same coating here. I, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use an IC chip. I think it's Marianne, Marianne's, because she controls up to six arc furnaces and an active vent, I believe. If not, then I can just do the active vent myself. All right, so if we go to the, um, okay, this is iron. Well, first of all, if we go to the end, there's only two silver, so that tells me it worked. There's a silver. So this stacker, look at that, has 10 ingots of silver in it, waiting to be stacked up to 500. Yay. It worked. I know, I, did, I would just take baby tests. But like me, I'd just take little tiny steps. Don't try to do everything all magical and cool and creative. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll hate yourself in the morning because your pillow is all covered in sweat. It's true. All right. So the sorting works. Yay. Um, so I need an IC chip and housing. Oh, and I can use that computer. Well, might as well just, um, get that done. I think, indeed, it's better to play the fool around in normal world, not too <coughs> creative. Yeah. I mean, it's hard, though, too, especially since they changed the difficulty settings. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I need... I see... Chip. Oh, we're getting low on solder. It's in bar. Invar. Oh, okay. Hey, Saturn, how the heck are you? There's that, and I need the housing. All right, the electronic printer is completely out of solder. My save is named Lunar Dying Hard. I have died zero times. Well, there you go. Oh, I'm just uh, trying to automate some more processing. Getting great advice from chat, you know, always. Ben's working on the uh, the trade, I'm working on the ore automation. We're gonna, we're trying, oh, okay, that's all I need. Trying to get it to where we don't have to go out and get stuff, you know? Then we can start working on the beautification process or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna put this stuff in here because if I do decide to Well, look at that. I was ahead of the game. All right. I have a spare IC chip in housing if you need one. Evidently, I created right. one and forgot. And now I need... Um, I'll just grab this motherboard. Why is my pipe 55 megapascals and why won't it go into the portable tank? You need... Something to push it or pull it. Need a volume pump or pressure regulator or turbo pump. You have a pressure regulator. Um, is it pointing the right way and if you're trying to, why is my pipe 55 megapascals and why won't it go anywhere? Portable tank. Um, uh, 
I don't know, make sure it's going the right way and it's it's on. So we're gonna call this Arc Furnaces 2.0. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, pressure regulators are very slow. If you're trying to put a certain amount of, of gas into a tank, pressure regulators is a sure far way to do to do it and walk away, but it is slow, like Digital pointed out. All right, so that's, I need the chip. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do not have a spare housing, just a chip, sorry. Oh, wait, no, I don't need to do that. I'm, I'm all over the place. I do have a spare housing. All right, so let's turn this on. That's a Harvey code. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a quick bio break. So I will be back. So let's, uh, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this. And then, oh, wait, I need to do that. Then come over here, do that. And we'll do this. And I'll be back very soon.
Look at all the words. That's a lot of words. Spooky, gotta move. Your tail's in the chair. Oh, we gotta bounce on. Wait, I gotta get Ben back. Oh wait, wait, too many things going on. Eh. All right, hey Ben, I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, Alex, always. I think for Christmas I'm gonna get here a jackhammer. That way there's no excuse. All right, so let's lock that down. Um, so we're going to go in here, edit. We're gonna clear this out for the library. And I am looking for uh, Harvey controllers, cooling room, digital CO2 release valve. Ben left this. I don't know what it is. Automate six arc furnaces. That's the one by Marianne. So we're going to put this code over here. And all I have to do is assign the arc furnaces to the pins. It is that easy. So, so we have turn the power on. This is for arc furnaces. Is there an active vent she controls in here? No, just the arc furnace. Alright, cool. So uh, we will confirm. And I need to go turn that chip on. My brain actually made a few words unlike normal. I, I did that. I got lucky on a couple things too. So this is the icy housing. We're going to turn this on. Back over here. I'm not going to even repeat what Alex said. It's so in inappropriate. I said icy housing, and she thought igloo. All right, so we want to export this to that. So that should be programmed. Oh, but it's blinking because we have to assign. So we're going to name these arc furnaces. Them back together all right to do that this oh wait that's all we need this our furnace one two on well, you guys know the pattern three You were going to ask what made the chip so cold? That would be the icy house. Yes. Can somebody please ban Ren? I'm kidding. All right. Um. Got it. Do this. Oh, we go backwards. C is to sort backwards, right? All lights. All right, so, so confused. Oh, I know. No, wait, are they? They're all plugged in. All right. I don't know what's going on. Sorters. Stackers. Transformer, wall light. Computer, glass door, sorter. Huh. Why are these guys not on the network? That's strange. Transformer reverse medium, wall lights. There's the computer, the glass door, sorters. People not connected. Uh, well, that's connected, connected. They're all connected. 
They're not connected. You're, you're, I, you're right. All right, that's why. I, it's not a pass-through port, right? That's correct. Um, we'll just make it a big wiry mess right here. All right. Oh. Now, should be cooking with Crisco. There we go. Nice. All right. All right. So I need to test this out. Um, what I'm going to do. can do this um i guess we'll just put a input shoot right oh we need to put a junction right here okay then we'll do a shoot inlet all right now Let's split this into four. It's good. Those fired up automatically. Cool. Now let's see if I'm fast enough to grab this. That. And it should go to the other two. Uh, I think the other one just stacked because it's a shorter. All right. So the automating, the firing up the arc furnace has worked. Yay. All right, cool. He shoots, he scores. Yes, he does. All right, so now what I need to do is I need a sensor and the gases are gonna go to an exhaust. Oh geez, that looks dangerous. There's an exhaust pipe here already. And I just hit my, oh, look at that, I fell. Um, so if there's an exhaust pipe there and I just run it along to active events back here, let's go get a bunch of brown pipe. I know. So automating those arc furnaces, that works. I don't want to lose all the gases. That's why I don't want to release the, uh, masses yet. Which gases? Whatever the arc furnace produces when it smelts all the ores. Mm. No, the, the deep mines don't produce any gases, but the the ore from the mine that goes into the centrifuge, that goes to the first sorter, that goes to the arc furnaces, when the arc furnaces are smelting, taking out all the impurities, it's creating gases. You know, it just, it goes in the atmosphere right now. So I'm gonna set up some logic to where uh, when that room fills up to a certain level that we're going to turn on some act events what oh yes i do wait what yes yes no wait what so what i'm doing over there is the same thing as here so when an arc furnace 
is smelting. It's creating gases, some sort of gases. It's coming out CO2, X, something like that. So, yeah, only the ones. Yes. Are we on the same subject? I'm confused. I'm not worried about these. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried that when I'm smelting gases, you can see, see, you can see gas is escaping. If I close this, see, it's producing nitrous oxide, nitrogen, and X when it smelts. Um, yes, yes. The, there, there is a tailpipe because this is driven by gas. It does have a tailpipe, so yes. What I'm, what I'm trying to articulate, which I'm failing at, is this room right here when these arc furnaces fire up, right? So the centrifuge is cleaning the ore, right? It's taking the dirty ore, cleaning it. I'm sorting it, sorting it by only the ores that I can smelt in the arc furnaces arc furnaces fire up if i don't do anything in that room eventually all the windows are going to blow out so i want to set up some automation to where when a certain level of pressure is met or uh, a threshold is met active vents will turn on and reduce the pressure down to a certain level and the the active vents output is going to use the same um pipe right here instead of stringing a whole new one. McThingy, is that something new at McDonald's, McThingy? There's Ben. Hi there. <laughs> Bye, Ben. See how far I can get with that. So I need vents active.
Right. So my question was, can I sneak? Pipe all the way. Let's see. So that's the closest exhaust right there that goes into the filtering system. So can we put, oh, I'll be, oh no, I can't do it there. Can I do it underneath the ladder? Oh, I can, but I just can't do it the handle. Is. I can't do it where the handle is, but I can do it. Um, no, hmm. All right. I don't, I just got on. I don't think I can. So, um, let's do this. So let's get this lined up. And what we'll do is we'll just go what about the floor. Okay, we can do the floor, it looks like. No, we can't do the, the ladders. That means um, probably to make this the easiest. Let's do this frame. And then we'll go down and we'll curve in. Let's put these walls back. Frames. Why do you need 
a ladder every well because just in case you don't have your jetpack on and you have another backpack you go down there and you don't have to try to jump out it's a osha thing you talk to osha um the first the first version of this i created a big pit and when i was picking up all the ore i had a ore backpack on and i was using the the drill to pick it all up but i couldn't get out easily so i added a ladder so i just did it here again Um, print some more pipe. Unless there's pipe in the locker I can take. Oh, there is. Take that. Make some more, though. Coffee mug, it's not mine. Ben's. All right, it's empty. Ben, do you think we still need the electrolyzer? No, I think we can do without it. All right, get rid of some of this machinery over here. I had to do that because I was doing so much welding and rewelding, I ran out of gas, but I had water, so, and I had the resources to make the electrolyzer, so. How do the fans on top work in a vacuum? They're vacuum fans for a vacuum. just handed a half-eaten banana evidently i'm a trained monkey thanks alex oop, oop, oop. you'd take half a banana if it was offered to you i love bananas i have i have a banana almost every single morning Um, okay, let's, this should be enough. So the fans are wired up. We're gonna hook up their exhaust. Then I have to get a sensor. I don't have any room for a sensor, my inventory. Um, if I stand over here, am I getting That's what I thought. So I need to add that thing over here. So what is the spacing I'm doing here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Whoa, geez. If I go that one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, so I can put it right here. Should work.
Right, Alex, have a nice day, Alex. That goes there. I'll get my battery charged because I'm in range of that one. But if I'm working over here or on this side, there's a cutoff because of the range. So now I'm not getting charged. I wire this. You can see that because my, my battery is going down. Now that that's plugged in, 97, then we turn this on, 98, yay. All right. So find that there, um, go inside here, and let's drop, oh, okay. Drop those, goes up, swap tools, little trick that instead of painting your pipes if you have the dominant color in your hand and you pick up and they get or you, you you can't actually just recolor them so if you put yellow and you went dang it instead of wasting paint you can just recolor them repipe all right so what i don't want ben tell me if this is something i should do so i have an output pipe from the centrifuge over here that that because it's gas fed it has stuff coming out of it and it's going through our filtration system if i don't want those gases going towards the arc furnace even though they're active vents it's still going to have this residual because we're sharing one pipe network if i put one of those one-way valves before it joins the exhaust does that make sense yeah. is that is that something i should do yeah. okay all right look at yeah, that i'm doing perfect. something right All right, so let's go put this stuff in the locker. Oh, look at that. I had all this heavy cable here. I didn't need all that. Right, so what we're gonna do is pay it forward. Take some of this back. We have to go get a valve. Making a mess. Hang on. I made an oopsie here. Bear with me for a sec. As good as new. that all right back to that all right um 
I don't see any valves. I need a valve. Um, one way on each of the act events. No, I'm just going to do it where it joins up. Yeah. That's strange. Asked for a valve and I got copper. So we kind of do the one-way valves like right here. So this comes from this tailpipe comes from the centrifuge. It comes from the gas generator. Um, so, and then it also is like the, the brown line is what we call our poopy line. It's our main input to the filtration. So instead of having one big long network with gases coming from everywhere, to me, it makes a little bit sense to not connect the whole network, you know? Because if I want to do anything with these pipes down here, I don't want to have to worry about a whole bunch of gas. So all I'm going to do is right here. Um, we're going to grab this. I'm going to put the valve there. Take that piece of pipe out. Swap it with the valve. Then make that a one-way. And then put the pipe there so right now if we before I do anything you can see in that pipe there's co2 nitrix o2 and some other stuff then if I put if I was just connect this it would expand all that into there and that's not what I, that's what I don't want to be done now if we check this side of the pipe Nothing there. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. That stuff's still there. All right. So um, I think that's all connected, right? So that, that went under there, goes through there. Okay. These go all the way down here. Go up there. All right, cool. Um, we're getting close. So now what I need is a sensor. So I need to read the pressure and set a threshold. If it gets greater than this, do something. So I need a logic reader, memory chip. Okay, I know what I need. Standard four chip setup, basically. Can't use this. First of all, let's go over and see how Ben's doing. He's been working on a secret project over here. Whoa. What do you have there, Ben? I see you, you've expanded your, whoa. You got a bunch of satellites now. You got his own Wi-Fi antenna. So you've expanded your wireless and what is this thing? It looks like gas storage tank. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. But it almost. I can't, get, I can't figure out how to build the basic uh, gas input output uh, terminal, so I'm a oh. little stuck. All right. All right. We have a landing pad for a helicopter. <laughs> and, um, okay. Sweet. Oh, I know how this works. Oh. What? I, I know exactly how this works. Yes. Wait, I'm going to show you. Hang on. You stand right there. Hang on. I have... I, no. Yes. No. Yes. I do. All right. Here we go. All right. Ready? That's how it works. All right. Coming in for a landing. This is how it works. See? And then you... Touchdown. That's how it works. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Who needs all the flashy blinky lights? All right. I'll leave that in your capable hand, sir. Oh, sorry. Something up. 
It matters. Yes. Ooh. It's a control tower. Uh oh. Good thing there's no fall damage in the game. Refrigerated vending machine. Nice. All right, cool. All right, so I need a sensor and four chips. Basically, I need those four chips, but my own chip. All right, so we need a sensor. Right? Oh, geez. I don't know what I just did. I'm breaking things. There we go. I prefer Pringles over Lay's. I gotcha. Um, I've been borderline with um. What's the brand of chip that has a lighthouse? I've been eating their salt vinegar. Cape Cod. Is that what it is? All right, there's our sensor. Then I need a logic. So I need to read it. And then turn on two active events. So I need two of these. Hey, Ben, I don't think I can trouble you to make some solder, could I? Of course you can. Oh, I got two. Oh. I got three. I don't need three. All right. All right. So read it. Turn on act events based upon a condition, which is going to be stored in a memory. And then we need the compare, which is a processor. Okay. Um, don't have enough regular wire. Make some regular wire. Oh, actually, no, I don't want regular wire. I need, um, heavy cable. I have heavy cable. Okay. So we know the sorting works because I've tested that. There's a lot of stuff in there. We know the activation of the act of the arc furnaces work. We only test it with silver. So to make sure this works, I'm going to turn this off, save some power. If I check these stackers, they should all be zero except for the silver. This is a silver one, so we should have some. We have 150. Sweet. All right. So, that, so far it's working. Let's go put some logic in this room. Um, the sensor. I'm gonna put. right here I guess
And then we'll call this the, um, gas sensor active furnace two. Is that what we're calling this? 2.0. Um, well, let's see here. I'm going to put the logic right here so that way I can look over and make sure it's working. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need a logic reader. We're going to need a, a batch writer, not a batch writer and we'll need air and the memory okay I guess I could have done that. All right, never mind. Looks so much different using a heavy cable. <laughs> then we just connect that. Hey, Pookie, what's up? Huh? Go alone. Huh? Go alone. Poor poop. All right, so first things first, let's close this door. Um, let's get some smelting. I have some gases to detect. I have no ore here. I do realize we're probably running a little low on ores. As soon as I get this up, oh, there's some lead. Yeah, that'd be good. Is there any more silver over here? No, just, just coal. Actually, charcoal. That's weird. Lead. All right. Wait a minute. I know what I can do. Let's get rid of that. Let's keep the lead. We're going to go dig up some iron here real quick. I need this. You go there. And you go there. Do I have anything in my belt? Oh, I got gold. All right, cool. I'm going to do some quick excavating over here. I saw a bunch of uh, iron sitting off the side. Back. Whoa, put on the brakes. Oh, maybe the, I saw the iron over at the launch area. Some iron. Okay, but some iron, some gold, some copper. We have some floating rocks here. Let me take care of. There we go. All right, so we've got some iron, some gold, and some lead. And it's what I want to do. Let's see if I can't beat. Let's 
So I want to get in there as they're smelting. All right. Then close the door. And then this thing should be registering pressure. Perfect. All right, so let's swap this back. Let's put that back. And then we're going to start doing some programming. So logic chips don't have a fourth connection on the bottom. It's usually the processor chips that have it. So if I want to get up to, uh, so how do I want to do this? I'm going to turn on the act events when it's great. Oh, maybe I can't do it the way I want. No, no, I can I can set it if it's greater than five kilopascals. It's not the ideal way of doing it, but that works. All right. So let's um, set our memory chip. That should be five thousand, I believe. I'm looking for five me five kilopascals. That should be right. Or is it five thirty? All right, we'll find out here in a sec. Um, well, let's rename these. All right. All right, so the very first test is to make sure that we're reading the information correctly. So our input here is going to be the sensor. There's a sensor we want to read pressure. This says it's got 2.10 something or other. So that's that's two that's two kilopascals. All right. Is that right? So if we want five kilopascals, this number needs to change. Instead of five thousand, we want five hundred. I believe that's right. So this says we have two point three nine. I want five megapascals. Yeah, okay, Ben, I'm confused. So if I'm reading from a logic reader and it shows 2.5 as a reading for the pressure, which is actually 2.5 kilopascals, if I'm trying to do a compare on the memory chips, I want that to, if I want five kilopascals, I want value of 500? 50. No, just five. Just five. Oh. All right, old numbers. I get it. I got the solder for you. Oh, yay. And yeah, we ran out of solder when I made um, the IC chip. I didn't want to deplete us all. Appreciate that very much. All right. So that's reading correctly. And what we want to do is with the batch rider, if the condition is... It's in the uh, storage locker by the regular furnace here. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so these are both active events. So that is going to be a transformer. We're just looking for active events. There we go. We want to, the input's gonna be based upon that. So logic compare, we're gonna turn them on. Not open. Right now we're not getting anything because we're not doing it. All right, so now that pressure is going up because we're still smelting, sweet. Um, so on the logic compare, we want to send a state of one if the pressure is greater. So this is going to be from the logic reader and we're going to compare it to the logic memory. So this should be a state of zero. If that reads, turn this on and off, just make sure, good. So when this gets up to five, which I don't think it is because there's no more smelting going on. Um, yeah, if 
I open up the doors, everything goes by. Okay, so let's go dig up some stuff and create the condition. So let's put this away. <clears throat> this. Swap to this. Default. All right. Want to get all four? You could just temper. Ah, uh, you're, you're. It's true. I could have just set that to two because there was more than two in there. And then it would have fired off. That's right. Could have done that. But I'm going to do it the old school hard way because I didn't think of the cool way that <clears throat> Digital just mentioned. But at the same time, I know I've seen all four arc furnaces fired up, but this way I can actually get more stuff in the queue because the flip-flops aren't really going to work the way I want them to. That's something I'll sort out later. Oh, there's a big hole there. It's a bunch of coal. And don't forget where I'm putting this ore into is after the initial sorting saying, hey, are you the ore that I'm looking for to smelt in arc furnaces? So I can't put something in there and expect it to be smelted when it's, ooh, there's ice. That should be good enough. Oh, you know what? Those things look so weird from a distance. Um, I think it might be advisable to um, put a display out here so I see actual pressure too let's do that before we get all carried away here so this back to planting that away keep hitting the jump let's get a console i've got a glass and then a gas display why they made it to where gas display boards don't stack the bizarre i'm gonna put that there 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 and um that's there for now all right so wire we 
guess I can just tie it right into the door here. Alright, Zach connects to the sensor. Perfect. Awesome. Nice. All right. Now let's um, open this up. So funny. All four of them should be fired up. There we go. Sweet. And that pressure gets above five, which is going to take a lot because it's a big room. The active vent. So I can see an active vent through my uh, peephole here. They turn on. Oh, they're not going the right way. They're pushing out. Whoops. All right. My bad. My bad the other way there we go there we go they should be off sweet all right so that worked yay all right cool so each time that hits five so it'll keep a minimum of five kilopascals that's fine that turns on all right cool Okay, so now um, let's check this basic sorting. What's going on here? Oh, geez. That was violent. All right, what do we got here? Got some iron. I think the sorting works and everything. There's some copper. There's some gold. Old one. That is some lead. So actually, let me just not check. Let's make sure we're working correctly here. So this is the iron. So if it's an iron ingot, that should read iron. Good. The next one hits is copper. So we should only see copper ingots here. Nice. Then we have gold. We have gold, lead, some lead, we have nickel, I don't think we have any nickel, nickel, we have silicone, should be some silicone, it is, and of course silver, there's silver, and then if anything sneaks through or there's a hiccup, it should spit it out right here. So. By design, when these stackers all hit 500, it will send it up into here. Now, I don't even have these things tied in yet. So let me go get some more cable. This seems to work. So before I open the floodgates, I want to get the silos rigged up. Receive. Probably will not be enough. All right, baby steps, you know, that's all it takes, baby steps.
I mean, it's not super vital that the uh, silos get rigged up yet, but. Over at the house, we've had a couple of uh, windy days. We actually had a couple branches uh, came off one of the trees and uh, a little bit too much for my saw saw. So we have a, uh, Alex's father has sharpened up the uh, blade on the chainsaw. I've only used a chainsaw a couple times. So since I'm a man that walks around in shorts all the time, I just want to make sure. Safety first. So I'm just getting a, a batch of uh, cables here so I can hook up the silos just in case the stackers overflow and they, they dump somewhere. I want somewhere to dump to. Let's um grab this. Let's go go take care of our food and water demand. Twenty-six tomatoes now, so this thing is definitely working again. Yay! All right, we have one hundred and twenty cooked tomatoes. <laughs> A lot of tomato soup. All right. See the 
data ports there and the power's here. All right, so. I think what we'll do is connect them all up. data to be continued we have to connect the other side too oh so, these will not have power no power so I have to connect the other side oh wait a minute wait wait that still won't work okay I know what's wrong um even if I just connect that one, that's just going to power that one. So I'm trying to come up with a not very sloppy way of doing this. All right, so this is what we'll do. Like this. Um, this one needs to come around. And I guess we'll do it like... That one should be on. That one's on because of that. These aren't on because I got to connect. Right, okay. Is there any reason that I'm doing that? No, that doesn't make any sense. up now oh okay Something just coming up a few cables short. Yep. Is there any way I can salvage a cable from somewhere? Doesn't look like it. I don't have any more there. Alright. So cables again.
Okie doke. So all we have to do is connect this one, which was really easy, but I made it complicated. There we go. Now they're all on. Cool. I have no easy way of controlling the next step here. So it either works and it gets all, it either works and it works or it doesn't work and it gets all jammed up. So we are going to, if I turn this off, it'll stop processing, but I'm going to do it this way. We're going to decrease fuel, which means the RPM start going down. To the best of my knowledge, they haven't made it so where this thing actually will just blow apart when it overstresses. But I think if I turn this off, it just stops processing and then it doesn't stress out that. So that means that we'll start seeing the dirty ore stack up here again. Well, that, that's a safer way of doing it right there. All right, then we just, um, here we go. All right, so, so far, none of the bad stuff is passing through. There we go, that's good, all right. So we're doing a bunch of silicone first, all right? So all the arc furnaces should be fired up soon. Again, the the sorting into the arc furnaces isn't a mathematical thing. It's just a random flip-flop 50-50 sort of thing. So it's gonna get jammed up. Yeah, all right, so that, that's unfortunate. So there's probably a better way of doing this, but I'm going to wait until this first batch gets itself worked out. Then we'll come up with a better way. Because right now, these other arc furnaces aren't going to get anything until that arc furnace, is, that arc furnace finishes something. You think overflow work? Now I'm not really familiar with the new um, with the new shoots yet. This overflow shoot will direct material to its overflow port when the thing connected to it default port is already occupied. Well, that would be the arc furnace. So I see what you're saying. We could actually tell this thing to look at the arc furnace. If it's got something in there, don't let anything go through and then go up. I see. Okay. All right. Interesting. Very cool. Anyways, th this is going to process, but it's definitely not going to process as much and as fast. Um, and then we'll come back here in a couple minutes to see, hopefully nothing is sitting out over here. That one is just manual if the shoot is blocked, it goes the other way. The flip-flop, are the overflows you're talking about? There's, um, there's a programmable flip flop. There's also a shoot you can set ratios on items flowing. So you have to send three items or you send one item. Oh, I see. Oh, like the splitter. Okay. All right, sweet. All right, like I said, I'm gonna let this entire batch run its course. Thanks, Digital. 
And we're just going to let this stack up. But it's a good first test because we know that the the un the unarkable the un that stuff is being divvied up. Cool. Let's go see how Ben's doing on his uh his uh, airstrip here. And also, I'm doing that because we were running out of ore. Period. All right. Ben sitting up in his fancy office up there watching ESPN. It's a little progress. I got tripped up on the whole runway thing. Apparently, okay, we no. have to build a runway that's about 20 segments long. Yeah, yeah, I, I did see their demo video of something that didn't have enough uh, space and it crashed. <laughs> so, any help? Nah, I just gotta start out the logic behind it. I got it. Okay. Yeah, because once I threw that lever, everything that's everything that's behind it, I just have to let it finish. Otherwise, no real way of turning it off. Not really. All right, so go find the silicone stacker all right so that's getting ready to dump into uh here unless it's already oh not there yet all right But I'm gonna take you up on your uh, your idea there, digital. I think <laughs> putting some logic here is. Uh, I knew that this was gonna be a problem. Hmm. So silicone. Then we have some lead, nickel silver copper and it's going to be slow going when it gets that gold all right cool yay it works and then this is going to build up and queue because we're not processing it that's fine hmm Um, oh, I know. Let me let me load up on some coal. Get this pit emptied over here. Make some uh, solid fuel. I finally figured it out. I don't know if we did it the right way, but um, where did the charcoal come from? It's weird. Why do I have two hundred chunks of charcoal? It's all charcoal. Oh no, there's some coal. That's weird. Huh. You'll see if I can turn charcoal into solid fuel. So it took me a couple, I think three days to figure out a process to turn. Actually, let's make sure that works. So if I type in solid 
Oops, not solid. Solid fuel. Hydrocarbon. Charcoal, not hydrocarbon? No, it's not. Really? Okay. But you can use this stuff. Well, let's see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? All right, so I believe our furnace is ready to process. So we have the hot gases going in. Yep. All right. I seem to remember you can use charcoal in place of coal. We're gonna. We're about to find out. For a green light. Well, the pressure the temperature I forgot so need to have a pressure all right Oops. so the temperature and the pressure aren't right Oh, that's right. Hmm. I didn't get no green light here. So it has to be 950 Kelvin. Oh, it's not 950 Kelvin in there. Only 906. Or that's 600. All right, let's um, let's do this. Let's um, turn this off. Let's eject whatever's in there. Okay. Oh, all right, fine. And then. Yeah, yeah. I think we just learned that. So we're going to vent. Right, we were testing it, just something to test out. So we're gonna vent the... So if we're not pumping anything into the furnace, we're gonna pump out the room and I should be able to do that. There we go. We'll empty the furnace, we'll empty the furnace room. Everything reset. Did, did I lose a chunk? I guess I, oh, there it is. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and turn these guys off. And that is filling it with cold nitrogen. Okay, so the room's gonna be nice and chilly, up to 125 kilopascals. Looks like it's almost empty. All right, so the charcoal definitely will use it to make steel. I've done that before. I have made solid fuel. It's in the solid fuel generates our backup to our backup. 
So, coal, coal. Here we go. How are we doing here? We have very cold oxygen. So evidently something warm came through here, uh, which fired off the cooling. And what's gonna happen is all these warm tanks over here are going to uh, use the exchange server and everything's gonna equalize. That's nice. We got 14 megapascals of oxygen, 28 megapascals of CO2. So as soon as I get the ore sorted out is what I'm going to work on is overflow tanks for all these things. The big ones, you know? Oh, yeah, I was going this way. Doesn't make sense to vent your gas into the atmosphere when you may need it later. All right, let's go ahead and um, store our coal here. All right, so let's uh, turn this off. And this is our very warm gas. Uh, we're gonna heat it up again. So we're gonna cause a big power surge. Uh, what? I turned on a bunch of heaters. So I'm drawing a lot of power. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? The sun's coming out. Uh, this is set for 1.5 megapascals, which um, not even close. We have 11.8 megapascals in storage. Um, it's open. It's just a little slow going. All right. We'll come back. Hmm. All right, so I'm trying to figure out a way that maybe I can um, <clears throat> I guess if I unthrow the lever All right, then we'll just get through all this stuff about a 30 minute warning there, Ben. All right. So processing silicone and let's actually show Do I have the cheat sheet? I don't know. So let me go bring up the cheat sheet. Let's just see. on the electrical side. So silicone is not the fastest, but it's not the slowest either. You could add more flip-flop so it eventually distributes. Well, I could, but we're actually gonna do it. Uh, Digital came up with a better idea. I'm just trying to find a way to Because the moment I 
the moment I try to do anything, everything comes flying out. So I think I'm just going to let it run its course. I've turned off the centrifuge chute. I was just kind of wondering, you know, there was a lot of silicone that went in there. But when I look at the cheat sheet, um, the next one in line is what? Is uh, the nickel? The nickel takes a long time also. Never mind. But we're going to use the um, the digital flip flop and see if we can't set up some logic so it e more evenly distributes. Yeah, because it, I can't add anything because I'd have to take it out and then all this stuff would go bleh. So we'll just have to let it run its course. <sighs> In the meantime, the dirty ore is stacking up very nicely. Expanded your uh, helo pad to an airstrip. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be big. <laughs> cool. Oh, there's blinky lights. It's so cool. It's going to give me a seizure, I think. Many layers of Maniac is guessing nine by nine. Uh correct. You are correct, sir. We actually have, well, I did make a lot of steel. All right, how are we doing over here? We got the pressure, we have the temperature. All right. Can I get I never tried to do this much. Let's see what we get. Wow. I'm impressed. Ben and I did a, a little time 
test. So we put a, a chunk of coal in and timed it in the output. The output between solid fuel and coal is exactly the same when it comes to power, but solid fuel takes twice as long to burn than coal. So it's a definite excellent replacement for coal. Because we actually ran into a situation to where when we had our new power system, we had some uh, blown wires and some uh, um, miscalculations, some circuitry, some you know brake pads and shoes, all sorts of issues. Ben sorted them out, but in the meantime, we lost power to the whole base. And then for some reason, the solid generator wasn't even sending power to the batteries, it seemed like. I think there was too much of a draw. So we, we isolated everything and then it was finally charging the batteries and uh unfortunately that we took a lot of coal just to get up to a certain point but we're good now this is our transfer line yeah it's right over some volatiles right under volatiles so we send data and all sorts of stuff back and forth the only thing that ben's not happy with is the the gas generator doesn't really output as much as we want. Yeah, so, we did a nitrous boost on it, but yeah, it might still be able to get more power out of it with a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, it might be better just to replicate what we have and have two gas generators. Well, it's doing better than just pure fuel, but the little bit of nitrous we had, but I, okay. I thought it would be more. Oh, I got you. So silicone definitely, uh, if I crack this open, here it goes. All right. So 1.0 works, has some issues. nicely all right um hey digital are you still there Nope, I'm here. All right. Hey, can the, doesn't make any sense to have the flip-flops here versus here, whether they're digital or analog. So in other words, what I'm thinking of is I can set up the digital flip-flops here once this runs its course, get those out of the way and just connect the outputs to the inputs over here. That way it gives me something to work on. And again, I'm gonna need the same number, right? One, two, three, just three flip-flops. What, what are you talking about?
because I can run shoots all the way over there and that way I can see I can see it working uh flip oh no that would be digital oh, okay. oh I'm in the oh that's right shoot no, that doesn't shoot we want powered shoots <gasps> oh Um, you can get away with two digital and one normal. Oh, that because the top one, right? Okay. All right, so this is the one I run. One a digital flip flop, right? And we're sending stuff to the right, so. All right, hang on. So let's make sure I get the right shoots. Oh, I think I made too many. I've never done a digital shoot. I didn't know. I thought you were going to have to program it. Oh, all right. So you want a three to one on the first one, two to one, and then, oh. But I need a, no a normal flip-flop up here, right? Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, right, 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 okay. Maybe I'm confused. It's not unusual. No, I'm doing this wrong. As usual. So this would be just a one-to-one -one up here. confused hang on i gotta so this is going to be the first one that's going to be a three to one so it comes in one side goes out the other side but oh wait that's not what i want that's what i want oh, okay wait a minute all right so it's basically a junction. So three to one. Yeah, but the th green is the primary output. Okay, all right. So um, 
Yeah. Because these feed each other. I don't see how these. Do I have to do it like this and do a. Actually, I, that could all come down. All right. Power I can deal with. Oops. I just thought the uh, the setup was the same as a regular flip-flop, but it's wrong. I'm wrong. It's not wrong. I'm wrong. So if we do that, I can't put another one on top because that doesn't have a pass-through. So I have to offset. Oh, right. Yeah, you're right. You see this flip flop. Okay, I'm... It, this just needs to be a turn. Um, hang on. One, two, three, and four. Three to one. Two to one. One to one. Is that right? Then we got our four, drag those across, get rid of those. make sure the primary direction is up okay like that it's a three to one well i've got four arc furnaces there's not a four to one is there oh there is oh totally not how you doing Yeah, I, you know, I got this and I knew it wasn't going to work accurately. So I'm just trying to set up a better. Yeah, because for the first one, you want three to go up. So before one goes up. So I want to make sure this is a four to one then or three to one digital. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm playing with something new that I never used in. Oh, no, three to one. All right. So, okay. So I got all the directions right. But then I need to do this. So that's one, two, three, and then four. Um, that more shoots over here. It will send three to the primary. Got it. And this will send two. And this will send one. I got you. Okay. I got you. Um, okay, what I need to do though is because my shoots, I need to make some turns and then come across because, yeah. All right, let me go make a whole bunch of shoots. Oh, wait, I got a bunch of shoots already. So you, you, you go there. 
And let's see if I can clean this up. So why did I turn around like that? Because I wanted to make some room for visibility or I was trying to create a bigger uh, queue system. So let's just um, follow the same path. Not convolute anything. Too late. Oh. All right, so. Okay, let's store those here. There we go. I just finished my room where I will store my atmospherics. Cool. That is very cool. All right, so to make this work, um, we're going to, uh, first of all, wait a minute. That goes that way. That goes that way. No, it's the window. There it is. This is absolute backseat and chat is free to tell me to shut up, but couldn't this be done with three normal flip-flops? Well, I've, I've got normal flip-flops right there and it's not working, so. I, I, I totally support backseat gaming, but only good backseat gaming. If, if or backseat, yeah. The questions are fine. Also, what makes this very hard on people is I'm not good at this game. So, right, window, window, then we turn. Okay. Now let's take this one away, this one away. And we have to, um, um, all right, hang on. This is gonna be, oh, that's gonna be in the way. I'm gonna have to move that. But let's uh, build appropriately. One, two, three, four. Right, so those four need to connect with this. Let's just get that kind of started. What is what's the stationer's meaning of life? To uh, conquer your enemies. That's from uh that's from Conan. And I hear the lamination. Alright. Dang it. Remember what I was doing, game? So the, the power, so the, this, this stuff is going to go away. So I'll just move that over one. All right. Digital, thank you for explaining that. Appreciate that. shoots but at least i can get this dialed in and set up oh and i could test it out too as soon as i get power to it because uh oh no 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 that, that stuff would fall out of here i don't want to test it now <laughs> i don't want to do that that would be dangerous all right so the power um okay i can do that
you'd have to set up a complicated array to flip flops to balance them correctly the digital ones take care of that for you yes have some one two three all right so here's our power can i just um this that and come uh wait or do i need to go down all right okay <gasps> that's all the cable i had oh i don't want to use big cable all right so hang on have cable we'll get some more cable so we're going to um power them right here let's go get some cable and some more shoots not with four cables you want yeah i, I know i know there's a bunch of spare cable right there but knowing me i would need that to connect to something so all right let's go um let's get out of ben's way we got resources down here oh almost fell all right so let's go here and type shoots basic shoots yeah that's all i need and then here type cable that wait none over here well, there's green ones but i don't want to do it. there we go All right. Whatever. <laughs> oh, hang on. could send each output of the flip-flop to another flip-flop and have each of those output to the furnace but that would limit your expandability yeah and the, my brain melt ability too mister Let's keep it simple it was andy's brain um down there and down, cross, up, land. All right, sweet. Then we can turn these on. Make sure they got power. Nice. Um, all right, let's put this back. Let's go ahead and um, put that there. Grab this and we can dismantle these. Those there. That one requires this. All right. Um, all right. So this thing needs to be moved because these are going to go the same path and connect uh, all those. uh all right let's uh let's get this out of the way and we gotta 
park myself in that grainer house here. All right, Ben. I'm just gonna do a little, a little bit more. Oh, I don't know what I just did. I didn't do anything bad. All right, so. No, not that. So if we do this right here, it's not so bad. Perfect, but it works. Tools, yes, important. So, in theory, didn't that's not gonna line up it should line up oh, oh i see because it's one two three four five oh all right so we'll have to do uh that one will go all right we'll just have to uh make a little bend here and there and that's fine all right i'm out all right ben we'll see you next sunday i will do have a good one ben yeah, you too all right i'm just going to uh do some pseudo shoots here what shoots I have to remind me of what I'm doing. So when we come back to this next week, I won't be going, what in the heck was I doing? You know, if you do this entire thing with the electric shoots at the end, it'll save you shoots. It will, but I'm just getting it set up ahead of time. And this offers me bigger queue sections too, if, I, if I'm reading into this correctly. Right, because if all the flip-flop happens there, we can fill up more that goes into the arc furnaces. Um, I think what we're gonna have to do is pick a spot right here. And then that will connect to that. I think. Yeah, the, the bigger buffer is kind of what I was looking for. I'll, I'll... That's going to connect fine there. Oh, up, up, up. That will... So that, that will just continue, once that eats up, that'll continue across and we'll go up and then that way. Okay, so I did this one wrong. I'm using Windows so I can see my, uh, how much is in the queue. Yes, I know they're more expensive. There's a little bit of method to my madness.
I mean, is it absolutely necessary? I see where stuff is. Not really. All right. So this is going to give me a pretty good idea about what I'm trying to do. Digital, again, thanks a lot for your input and assistance on that. I don't think I would have figured that out correctly. Mainly because... These flip-flops are like, um, they're like junctions. So I didn't understand why these aren't the same, but I can, s I don't understand why they don't have an input on the bottom. Resources enough you need to render anyway. What? Or FPS issue. Yes. All right. All right, guys, that's going to do it today. All right, tomorrow we're going to try a new game. I picked up a new game called Alien Dark Descent. I'm a big Aliens fan, so we're going to give that a shot tomorrow. Dota, we'll see you later. And then Tuesday we'll be back with uh, some Kerbal, probably, unless I really get into it. So, um, guys, let's roll some credits here real quick. Digital Notable Ren, thank you guys for your continued support. Scary. Okay. I'm Hicks. He's Hudson, sir. Uh, what? All I know is that the Xenomorph. Oh, uh, what? All right, guys. You guys have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good one.